In a recent workshop, somebody asked if you could use conditional formatting to change the color of symbols like this upward pointing triangle and the downward pointing triangle based on whether an increase is positive or negative. Because an increase, for example, in revenue would be positive. So in that case, they wanted the upward pointing triangle to be green because that indicated good performance. But an increase in expenses, for example, might not indicate good performance. And so you might want that to be red. Is that possible? Well, it took me a lot, little while to figure it out. And yes, I figured out how to do that. Let's start by looking at, and you see that here, I've got the green upward pointing here and the red upward pointing there, but they're different numbers. So let's walk through how we set this up. So the first thing is, is to set up these particular symbols into cells. And these symbols, if I look at the home ribbon here, and we go up and take a look at the font, it is this font called Sugoi UI Symbol. That's a great font because it has a lot of good characters to use. I'm using the triangles here, but it has many other symbols you could use. So I'm gonna go down to a new cell here. I'm gonna to go to the insert ribbon, and I'll move over to the far uh, end here, and I will go to the symbols, and I'll say insert a symbol here. And what I have is I have the dialog box for the symbols, and I have the font that I can choose. So I've chosen Sagoe UI symbol. It's just a drop down list, scroll down until you find that particular font. And then you can scroll through all the different shapes that there are. I'm in the geometric shape subset. You'll notice the filled upward pointing triangle is here and the downward pointing triangle is over here. So they're not beside each other in the list of different shapes, but they're usually fairly close. So you have different symbols you can choose from here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and I'm gonna select, because it's recently used, uh, it's in my list here. I'm gonna select it and then I'm gonna click on insert. That inserts it into the cell, does not close the dialog box. So I'll close that dialog box and then hit enter to put it into the cell. And similarly, I'll do the same thing, insert, symbol, with that Sagoe UI, the downward pointing triangle, insert at that in the cell below, and hit close. So I've now put my triangles in there where I want them to be. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my numbers and the formulas to determine whether the triangle should be upward pointing or downward pointing. So revenue. Revenue, let's say the change in revenue was uh, it increased by 2.3%. And I now have the revenue number in there. And let's say I have uh, expenses. And they went up by 1.2%. Now 1.2% is an increase, but I'm not gonna want that to show that it was good. So I'm gonna want that in red. Now, here's where I'm going to use formulas. And the formula is going to look at the change in the revenue and then select, should it be an upward pointing triangle or a downward pointing triangle? Fairly simple uh, formula here. When I go to my formula bar, I can simply put in equals if, my cell right beside it, so that's going to be B14, is greater than zero. Then what I want is I want it to use that upward pointing triangle. So I want it to use this cell here. And I'll press F4 to lock that. And if not, then I will use the downward pointing triangle, this cell here. Now, Obviously, if you want to in, go further, you could set up a, a, some symbols where if it was exactly zero, you can uh, deal with that situation as well. I'm just gonna keep it simple right now. So now I have done the symbol and it looked at it and it said, ah, okay, if it's above zero, it's an upward pointing triangle. Just let's check this. So if I put minus 2.3%, indeed, it shows me the downward pointing triangle. Okay, so we've got that set and now, Really, because the formula is uh, gonna work, I just have to do the F4 on the downward pointing triangle, forgot that. Now I can just simply copy this formula down and it should work there too. So I will now take a look at this. Let's say it's minus 
indeed, it's working. Okay, great. So now we have to add conditional formatting. Now, conditional formatting is one of the great features in Excel. And in this case, we're going to have to add two rules for each of these cells. Conditional formatting is on the home ribbon, and I'll go to the first cell that I want to apply conditional formatting to, which is the revenue symbol. And I'll go to conditional formatting, and I'll go down to a new rule. Now, the new rule allows me to say, format the cells where I want it. Now, I don't want to use format only cells contain because the cell value isn't in this cell. It's actually in a different cell. So here's where we have to say, use a formula to determine which cells to format. The formula is entered in this area here, and I'm going to select my value for the revenue change. And if that is greater than zero, so that's where we are positive for revenue, so that we want to be green. Now, if that is the case, then I can go over to the format and select what format do I want. Now, the font, you can't change the font, but you can change the color of the font. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I don't want the color to be automatic. I want it to be, let's say, this nice bright green here. I'll click OK. I'll say OK for this rule. And notice it changes it to green. Perfect. But I need a second rule to address the issue of what if it is below zero. I, I don't want it to be green. I want it to be red. So I'll stay in that same cell. I'll go back to the conditional formatting. And I'll say I want a new rule. And again, I'm going to use the same, use a formula to determine which cells here. So use a formula to determine. I'm going to go where the, what's the formula. So I put my cursor in there. I'll go down. I'll select the cell that has that particular value in it. If it's below zero, that's what I want to do. Now I'll say format and change the, the color of the font here to be, let's say, this bright red, and then I can click OK, and I can click OK on that. Now, if this has been set up properly, if this goes to minus 2.3%, not only should it turn the triangle down, but it also should turn it red, which indeed it did. So we have that set up the way we want it for revenue. So similar thing for expenses, but in this case, if the expenses go down, we want it to be a green. If they go up, we want it to be a red. So I'll do the same thing, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula. The formula is going to be this cell here. If it is less than zero, then uh, my format, I want to change the color to green because that's expenses, that's good performance. We want that. Click OK and added that. Notice it turned it green because it was negative 1.2%. So I add my second rule, which says if this value is greater than zero, then I want to format the color of the font to be my red. And we'll add that. So if this is now positive 1.2%, we see that it changes. And for each of the cells here where we have our triangles and where it's doing the conditional formatting, we can always check. We go to conditional formatting and we go to manage rules. What it does is it shows us the rules and you'll notice here formatting rules for current selection, which means just the cell we've selected. And so here we see our formulas. We see what's going to change in the formatting. It's just the font color and which cell that applies to. So this allows us to always check that the formatting is set. Now, when the, the data gets updated, the direction of the triangle and the color of the triangle automatically change because we're using a formula for which triangle is being selected and we're using conditional formatting to change the colors. So that's how you can apply conditional formatting, color conditional formatting for these symbols in Excel. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel.
check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.